Hi Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your November 2021 New Moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into the safe and loving space. Let's let the bowl sing as we see what the tarot has to say. How will Sagittarius be affected by the November 2021 new moon? Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. And spirit guides, angels. And spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. And spirit guides, angels. Oh, goodness. And spirit guides. Okay, let me just get that one runaway card that fell down. You guys get to hear my squeaky floor. And there we are. So at the bottom is our rooted self, the left hand side is our inner self, the middle, our heart, our emotional self, the right hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. We have the star, which is Aquarius energy, and we have the world. So if we have Aquarius within our natal chart or Aquarius is within our lives, they're going to be rooted energy around them. There's going to be a sense of of focusing, but there's also going to be a sense during this time on focusing on our dreams of what we really desire, of where it is that we really want to be. And spirit is, sh is showing us not necessarily what we cross our fingers and wish for, but what we really need from inside our hearts, from deep down in ourselves, which actually could be a little bit uncomfortable when we start to get it. But the world starts to open. The two of wands, the world starts to open. We're starting to see ourselves moving beyond what we thought, but also limitations. We have the Knight of Wands, Fire Sign Energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. This is us coming through very much as a knight. We're going to be looking backwards a lot, and I'm not exactly sure why. I actually think it's from this fear of moving forward, this fear of everything that's coming that we're going to be like, oh, okay, let me just make sure I have everything perfect, make sure I have everything perfect. And what Spirit's saying here is that you'll never have everything perfect. You know, just kind of jump, just kind of go, kind of discover, see what happens. We then have the Page of Wands, which again is us as, you know, a student, as an understander, but it's also other si fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, as well as us, Sag Sagittarius, coming into play. We're going to see ourselves getting messages. We're going to see ourselves a little bit hesitant. There's a hesitance here. As we slowly and steadily move forward, this is Earth sign energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn coming in also at our heart. So if we have that within our natal chart or we have Earth sign energy within our lives, if we're dealing with earth sign energies, they're not moving as quickly as we would like them to move. Earth sign energy, the Knight of Pentacles is the slowest moving knight, so we can have a bit of frustration around them there. We have the Seven of Swords. We're releasing so much, and we're going to be find, finding out that we're dealing with betrayals. We're dealing with hurts and pains that have compiled and compiled and compiled, because this is the time where everything that we've swept under the rug, everything that we've pushed off and said, okay, I'll deal with that later. You know, I don't really want to look at it right now. Everything starts to come to a head. So do be aware of that in a very real way. 
We have the Ace of Swords. Clarity, yes, most definitely. Clarity of mind, clarity of voice, clarity of what we want and how we're moving forward. But there's also a sense here of cutting through doubts and fears, cutting through chaos and, you know, misunderstandings and really finding our voice. And then we have the Knight of Wands, again, us coming through as a knight. But this time we have impulsiveness, yes, here, but this time we're not looking at the past. We're moving forward. We're moving forward towards what it is that we want and where it is that we want to be. We're defending a lot during this time. We have the Knight card coming up three times. So we're going to be a defender very much of the earthly plane and what we desire in the here and in the now. Let's look at our chakra energy. In, not our chakra energy, our energy to be mindful of. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. It's the knight. It's the king of cups. So the king of cups, water sign energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. This is emotional manipulation. This is somebody who's, you know, spirit is saying like their bite is worse than their bark. But no, yeah, well, yes, their bite is worse than their bark, but their bark is pretty darn bad. So be mindful of that, that this person is intense and this person can be very vengeful, very manipulative. It moves us to our chakra energy. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Listening. This is the third chakra. So when we have the third chakra, we usually think of talking. We usually think of communication. But listening is absolutely an intrinsical part of communicating. And it's one that most people don't do anymore. This is being able to listen to ourselves. This is being able to listen to our inner voice. This is being able to listen to the world around us, to what's really being said and not just what people kind of want us to believe is being said. You know, it's, it's going deeper. So that's going to be something very important for us. So let's talk about this time astrologically. We have the new moon in Scorpio. And the new moon in Scorpio on the 4th of November has us working through our fears. And it really has us doing this in a bold and powerful way, but also in a way that says, I'm not slowing down for you. We're going to push forward. This is going to be like a wrecking ball and you're just going to have to hold on. The sun is going to be conjunct the moon as the sun is always conjunct the moon in during the new moon. And this represents the end of one cycle, the beginning of another. So we have this burst of clarity, this burst of energy. We have this sense of being able to finish things, but also being able to start things that we've put out off for so long. The new moon is opposite Uranus, which brings with it the struggle for independence. Everybody wants to find themselves. Everybody wants to be themselves. Nobody wants to be put into a box anymore. Nobody wants to be kind of caged in or defined. And this is going to be a time where we can find it really frustrating because everybody's saying, you know, enough is enough. I'm... I'm going for me, like I'm going after what my heart needs, what my soul needs, what I need to feel successful or, you know, seen or loved or heard within this world. And so again, things that were swept under the rug, they're not being swept under the rug anymore. Think of it very much as having pots on the back burner and we're like letting them simmer. They're fine. We're not really worrying about them. But then all of a sudden that pot, that pot lights on fire or everything boils over. It, it can go two ways. Now, the lighting on fire will we need our immediate attention, but that can be dealt with if we're paying attention. The one that boils over also can be dealt with, but it can get all over everything. So just be mindful of the way that we're going to be forced, forced out of our comfort zone. Keep an open mind. Keep an open mind. Nothing's going to be as devastating or as intense or as, you know, all encompassing as we originally think it is. So just be aware of that. We also need to embrace an adventure during this time with a new moon opposite Uranus. We want to step out of our comfort zone. We want to go after something new, something after something that we've always desired. And this is a time to go for that adventure, even if it's small, even if other people would say, oh, that's not an adventure for us. It would be now the energy that gets to balance everything is Mercury sextile Venus, which brings harmony. You know, the new moon opposite Uranus brings this chaos, brings this change, brings this intensity. We become aware of it all. We also become aware of what we want, of our goals, and also communication. You know, communicating is going to be key. Listening, for us, is going to be a superpower. Things seem overwhelming, but we have ourselves centered. And this moves us with the with Mercury sextile Venus to love and friendship and cooperation and compromise. And it brings people together. Mercury sextile Venus brings people together when the new moon opposite Uranus pulls people apart because everybody wants to go their own path. The star constellations during this time are we start off with the constellation of the crown, which heightens our artistic abilities and also brings us a love for flowers. Also, flowers just become centering for us. So if we can keep a bouquet of flowers in the house or even, you know, fake flowers, we're going to find it to be beautiful. We're going to find it to be settling. And we're also going to find ourselves very attracted to floral print prints. 
even if that's not usually our aesthetic. But the crown constellation also brings mental weariness and disillusionment. It's kind of like I carried this crown for so long. I've seen so much. I'm, I'm not surprised anymore, but I wish I were. The fixed star within the constellation of the crown is Alfeca. And Alfeca is of the nature of Venus and Mercury, who are already big players during this time. The star Alfeca brings with it honor and dignity while enhancing our artistic and poetic abilities. The constellation of the cross also comes into play. And this brings perseverance, but it also brings with it burdens, hardships, and struggle. It's very much that old saying, what is our cross that we bear? This is our cross to bear, you know, type of thing. So we're going to see the struggles that we ourselves bear and what we have to carry and hold on to. The fixed star within the constellation of the cross is Arcus. And this is of the nature of Jupiter, bringing religion and spiritual inclinations to the forefront. We're going to find that we like things of antiquity. We like things of ritual and and history. We're going to be inclined towards ceremonies and justice. We can also always think, we can also think during this time that certain rituals, certain, you know, ways of doing things will be more beneficial than they actually are. We're just going to find them to be also very soothing, very comforting. And the way that they have us stepping back into our own bodies, stepping back into ourselves, that's going to be what really helps us. Now, Arcus also brings the magic back into the world. It says to us to focus on the little things that when we were small, we used to go wow over. But now, because we're older and we're jaded, we don't see it anymore. This is reconnecting with our wonder. The star. At our root is what we wish for. At our root is what we greatly desire from our world and from ourselves. And that starts to open up the world to us. This again isn't the cross our fingers wish for. This isn't the blow out the candles on the birthday cake wish for. This is something that we wish for deep, deep down within ourselves that we might not even be aware of if we're not, you know, super aware of what we want and where we need and we haven't been on the spiritual journey for a while. Or even if we have, this is something that can be such a deep longing within us that we completely over overlook it. We don't think it can be anything more than just a want. <clears throat> Excuse me. During this time, as we look at our dreams, as we look at what we desire, as we look at the bigger picture of who we are and where we want to be, we start to find ourselves breaking out of a box we were put in. But as this dream comes forward, we can also find ourselves very afraid. This says right here with the new moon in Scorpio, work through your fears. And as our dreams come forward and as our dreams are confronting us, as well as we are confronting our dreams, we have to work through the fear. What if I achieve this? What if I embrace this? What if I move forward this way? The world opens in a way that we might not necessarily be ready for, even though we've always longed for it. Or we may not think we're ready for because we want things to stay in the same comfor comfortable chaos that we're already in right now. And if this door opens, that chaos, that, that comfort, not the chaos, the comfort, it will be gone because life is chaos. And so that will be back. But we're afraid to walk through that door. So embrace that that beauty that's coming forward. The two of wands is telling us there's more out there than meets the eye. There just is. And there's going to be a fear as we are walking forward. We're going to be looking backwards and thinking, well, I have to defend that. You know, I have to fix that. That has to be perfect first. And we're going to think, what the heck is that? But it's the proverbial that. It's the proverbial, you know, everything just has to be all straight in a line. In Sagittarius, nothing is going to be all straight in a line during this time. We're going to have things topsy, turvy, upside down, intense, overwhelming and yet it's going to be what leads us to being the student of our hearts to opening up our hearts to seeing what we desire we can also be fighting for things that happened before defending ourselves from having to go go through things that we have been through before so do be mindful of this during this time that what we could be fighting what we could be fighting against as this change comes in and this change is very powerful within us is that we don't want to make the same mistakes we don't want to be through go through and be a part of the same heartbreaks, the same pains, the same disappointments. What we're going to learn within our hearts are that is that we're students. We're students of what we love. We're students of our way forward. We're students of what's important to us. We're going to see that we learn a lot and we can be afraid at times and it will just make us freeze. But spirit's going to be sending us messages, going to be helping us open our eyes, going to be helping us see things differently. And that's going to be the game changer here. We are slowly and steadily moving towards prosperity, but we're also going to see that people in our lives are slowly and steadily moving towards their prosperity, towards what they need, what they want. They're not going to be moving as quickly as we want them to. So there can be frustration there. The sense of, especially in 
in work relationships or relationships that revolve around money or have money to do with them. We're going to be frustrated because we're going to think, well, why can't you just, you know, do this? Why can't you just open up the store or move this way? So do be mindful of that during this time. We're also going to see that a lot is being revealed to us. And a lot of betrayals from the past, hurts and pains and disappointments are coming to the surface. And we're going to be looking at them and saying, why am I defining myself? Why am I carrying around this baggage? It's leading me backwards. And this is a time where we really want to move forward. We want to move into that adventure. We want to move into that unknown. And as we are releasing so much, there's things that we've been carrying with us since childhood that need to be released that need to be acknowledged at least. Even if we're not ready to, to release it, we need to listen to our inner child. We need to listen to our inner self. And it moves us then to the Ace of Swords. It moves us to clarity, to cutting through doubts and fears and negativity, to seeing things more openly and more honestly than we have seen things before. And sometimes that is disturbing. You know, something can come our way that just kind of implants itself in our minds. And we think, why did I have to learn that? Like, why did I have to know that, that ever happened? But what Spirit is showing here is that we're cutting through so much negativity that has held us back. So much that has, you know, curved our tongue, made us not say what we needed to say, and made us not go after what we needed to go after. This is a time where we start to see ourselves as warriors, where we start to see ourselves as achievers, where we start to see ourselves as even innovators, creators. And it moves us to that night of wands where we can be impatient. We can, you know, sit there and just be frustrated. I'm done waiting. I'm done planning. I'm done, you know, everything. I'm going to go for it. And Spirit's saying here, you know, plan a little bit, you know, wait a little bit. Don't run off half cocked because then the gun blows up in your face, right? That saying comes from revolutionary times or, you know, the American Civil War or the American Revolution. I can't remember which one where if you didn't pull, I think it was both of them. If you didn't pull the trigger all the way back after you loaded the gun and push everything down, push the, the gunpowder and, you know, everything in, if you didn't cock back the gun all the way, the gun would blow up in your face and you were in the middle of, to say a chaotic time would be putting it mildly. You know, you're in the middle of a war. You're not paying as much attention as you should be. So in the middle of the chaos of life, in the middle of the, the chaos of existence, we're going to find that maybe we're not paying as much attention to making sure that we're prepared for what we need to go after, making sure that we're, you know, we're, we have things lined up. So do be mindful of that during this time where so much is changing, so much is moving forward. We can feel like I'm just have to keep running and spirit saying here, make sure that you are moving forward. Yes, but not moving forward so quickly that things, that things get overlooked and they blow up in your face. So just be mindful of that. Let's see what the moon has to say for herself. Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly angels and spirit guides, angels and spirit guides show me clearly guide this reading and show me clearly angels and spirit guides angels angels and spirit guides show me clearly guide this reading and show me clearly angels and spirit guides angels and spirit guides show me clearly guide this reading and show me clearly angels and spirit guides. It's time for healing, which is absolutely true. Now healing brings abundance. It's time for healing. That healing brings abundance. The way that our wishes, our deep longed for wishes are coming forward. It, it makes us heal. It makes us heal to be able to accept them, to be able to open up that door. It moves us to balancing the spiritual and the practical within the darkness of this new moon, within the darkness of serenity, insights, understandings that are coming our way. You and your loved ones are safe. Patience. And we have the, the Knight of, of Pentacles, right? That tells us to be patient. Everything has its way of working out. It may not work out exactly the way that we had planned it to or the way that we had originally wanted to, but everything, things are safe and secure. And even if people wind up going in their own directions and wind up taking their own paths, we need to have patience with the way that we're developing, with the way that we're moving forward, with what we're going after, with what it is that we truly want. It brings us then to the end of a tough cycle approaching extremes. So we're going to go through this time of extremes, this time of intensity, this time of extreme, you know, heat and cold and, and everything in between 
where we think, you know, how am I going to move forward in this? The end of a tough cycle is approaching. We're kind of purging out that which needs to be let out of us. And as we purge it, we start to see ourselves gaining our footing, understanding ourselves more, you know, standing up for ourselves in a way that we might never have thought that we would. Our subconscious Luna energy is adjustments are required. Fruition. Adjustments are required to bring to fruition what it is that we deeply long for, what it is that we want, and in the direction that we're, we're headed in. Our subconscious energy to be mindful of is the Hierophant. Traditions. It's also power. It's a sense of things have to be done this way. And we have to just be mindful of that. Now, this could be an energy that we come against, and it could be that it has to be done this way, but we're going to balk against it. There's going to be something here where it's like, okay, you know, stop. Let me step back into me. But this person is still going to be pushing things forward, or this institution or whatever is still going to be pushing things forward in a very certain way. Our subconscious chakra message is visualization. This is the third eye chakra. This is being able to visualize. And I know visualization gets such a bad rap because we've been told like, if you just visualize it, it will happen. No, if you visualize it, you start to make the pathway within your mind. And the really awesome, scary thing about our mind is that our mind doesn't know the difference between make-believe and reality. And so as we visualize things, as we, you know, plan things in our mind, our mind thinks this has happened. You know, this has happened. This is something I'm okay with. This is something that I can move forward with. And so as we visualize, we set up those pathways within our minds to make us courageous, to let us take those steps forward, to not hesitate so much as dreams are offered to us or as, you know, new doorways open up. It moves us to our subconscious rooted self, which is the emperor, which is Aries energy. But this is also claiming the throne, claiming our voice, claiming what we desire, knowing what it is that we want, what it is that we need, where it is that we need to be. And if this is part of our natal chart, there's a real sense of claiming our own power. And that's going to be very important. Understanding what we want from the situation, understanding that we get to have control within the situation and moving ourselves forward brilliantly. It moves us to our subconscious in ourself. And that's the sun. We get to shine. We get to shine brightly and intensely as we, as we embrace what it is that we, we desire, as we are looking out at that future, at those dreams and those wishes and the world that's opening to us. And we can be looking back. Yes, most definitely. But spirit saying here, embrace what you love. Let yourself shine. Let yourself see what develops as the happiest card in the whole entire deck embraces your subconscious. Our subconscious emotional self is temperance, balance, going deeper and deeper and deeper into what we love, into what we want, into where we need to be. And as we embrace this, we find balance within ourselves. We find a sense of harmony that has been missing. And a sense of patience. It moves us to our subconscious public arena self. And that's the queen of swords. We have the Ace of Swords. So we're definitely taking that gift of knowledge and intuition and power and claiming of our voice. We're also going to find that we're cutting through so many doubts and fears and so much negativity that has held us back. A narrative that we don't want to be part of our story anymore. We cut through the, the toxic and we claim the powerful. This is also the warrior queen. We are warriors during this time and we don't care what anybody else has to say. We are moving forward in this warrior spirit to where it is that we need to be. And even if this warrior spirit is just simply claiming who we are, claiming what we love, you no, know, going after what it is that we desire, that that's huge. And we get to embrace that. All right. All right, Sagittarius, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power and the intensity of this new moon. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you.
May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Sagittarius, and may you have a blessed moon.